Well, there it is. That's the final coat of gel down on there. Look at that. That looks nice. Now it's still a little tacky. It's got some stick to it, but that looks real nice. That came out real well. But, I mean, that's it. So, the rest will be uh, clear coating, and you guys don't need to see all that. But, um, next up will come, uh, I have a keel guard coming in, a 12-footer. I've got a, um, a little guard that goes here. It protects your, your bow from the, the rollers over on the trailer. Um... And then once I get the keel guard on, I get that on, I get my, all my clear coats done, I get my transom stuff uh, bolted in. Um, and then we'll just be uh, putting it back on the trailer, and then we'll be starting on the inside. So, but this is how you gel coat, how you re-gel a boat. Very time consuming, but fairly simple. Don't forget, guys, down in the corner, like and subscribe, okay? Other than that, stay tuned. We are clear coating. Six quarts. I have these two containers. And we're doing it all right now. What we're doing today is we're putting the clear coat on, and we're doing all of the clear coat, all of the clear coat. Okay, doing all of it at one time. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to fill my, I'm pretty sure my container here holds one quart. I think that's what that is. And I'm going to do one quart at a time. And so I will be doing six quarts. I got three in each, each can. We're going to do it all. It's a little bit chilly. I almost want to only wait till tomorrow, but I've got a lot of stuff I got to do. My battery ended up dying, and uh, so I had to stop. However, there she is. 
got the clear coat on it. It has got orange peel like crazy, but look how bright that is. So bright and shiny. Oh. So I ended up leaving one quart. Left one quart over so that way like I'm going to do my sanding. I got a few spots here. I got a sand gnats flew into my stuff while I was spraying. So I might have to respray this, those spots a little bit. But uh, So I did save some. And uh, after, after that, we are going to be... Uh, so that will be the end of this segment. So we will have... You'll have seen a couple parts on how to prep and prepare how to put your gel coat on and then the prep for that so that way you can prepare it for your clear coat not a recluse but ugh. look at that oh, icky. Um, but we're going to go ahead and let this cure up for the rest of today and then probably tonight that's when I will start sanding with the wet sanding and I will show you um, what to do on there. Oh my, that's that's so nice. My transom had like a like a divot in here because when I laid the fiberglass down on this side, it uh, was kind of raised up, but now it's all gone. It's very smooth. That's nice. So, and what I did, I guess one thing you guys didn't see, and you won't see last night on this, the last part of the segment will all be fast forwarded, is I just put this on on layers. I just kept spraying and spraying and spraying. So this clear coat is just one single solid layer. Um, what I did mess up on, and I, I probably should have did this, so I, I should have cut my Duratec clear UV high gloss, or high UV clear gloss, okay? I should have cut that with a one-to-one -one with the Duratec, okay? Uh, the Duratec high gloss additive. And that would have allowed me to spray a lot smoother. It sprayed, it almost sprayed like paint. Um, I did have a couple mishaps to where it started to kick in the gun because I filled it up to a quart. Had I did the one-to-one -one mixture, it would have sprayed a lot faster. I probably would have had all of this done, had all my stuff sprayed, and probably an hour tops and it ended up taking me three hours so and that was with spraying I had to clean the gun I had to wait for the gun to dry I had to fill the gun add catalyst mix real quick spray clean the gun you know rinse and repeat over and over and I was only able to do a half a quart at a time when I was wanting to do a quart at a time so that was the only bad part about that what I my mixture was at what did I do this at so I think I had a two to one so I had because I had one gallon, yeah, it was a two to one. I had the one gallon of the high UV clear gloss gel coat. So one gallon of that four quarts to two quarts of the Duratec high gloss or the clear Duratec gloss additive. Um, and I should have just did a one to one mixture. Um, um, so that, that's kind of a bummer, but. Because uh, it did, it was a, it was it was thick, and I'm spraying. I was spraying out of a 2.5 millimeter gun. So I guess if you're going to spray with stuff that's not thinned out, you need to go up to a three. It'll probably spray a little bit easier, a lot thicker. But it took a little bit to get it going, and once I did get it going, it was good. But I do have some issues. Um, my paint suit ripped on me. Which that sucked, and then on top of it, like I guess I had I don't know how well you guys will be able to see. Let's see, so we can see it right there. That's a dog hair, you know, remnants of a gnat. There's another one, another gnat, and then I had water drip here, and you can't really see it. I think what ended up happening is a gnat ran in front of me while I was spraying, and it exploded. So I'm gonna try to sand this out. So I've got another dog hair there and so I had dog hairs coming off me yeah so I guess blow yourself down real good before you start spraying and I hope for the best but I'll wear a cap but yeah it took about 
three hours for this. And I don't even know how many, how much more time it took to actually put the gel coat on. But yeah, so I'm going to let this cure. It, now it cured overnight. However, it did get down to the low 50s. So I want, I want to make, and this is the nice thing about the Duratex. So even with the catalyst, because I, I went a little less on my catalyst. Because the temperature in the garage was in the 70s, which was good. So I, and I was, they were calling for 6.5 mils for a one and one quarter percentage of your catalyst. And that was the 6.5 mils. And one mil is one cc. I don't know why they do everything in cc's when all your syringes and stuff are all going to be in mils. So um, that's the equivalent. One cc is the equivalent to one mil. So... noise um but adding the duratec does allow it to flash better you'll have a better flash so even if you add the less catalyst when the duratec is evaporating from there um it's going to it's going to help it so to speak so i, I did use less catalyst but with the duratec you're i'm okay you can do that um but however the temp did get down into the 50s last night Today it's supposed to be up into in the higher 70s, so I'm going to let this just sit, let it fully cure out for the day, and then probably later tonight is when I will start the wet sand process. And But that is the end of this series on gel coating, or I guess re-gel coating and fiberglassing and putting a clear coat on, you know, your, your boat or your small watercraft. Um, don't forget guys I will have more videos coming out so there'll be wet sanding um, once I'm done I'm gonna be putting on a keel guard um, a bow guard for uh, the rollers so that way you know it's going up it doesn't scuff the front or anything and I mean we could recap so recap recap I metal flaked the trailer repainted metal flaked the trailer I recarpeted the bunks, reinstalled the bunks, and then I put new rollers on, and we've got the trailer winch on that. So, trailer's good. With the boat, we've now got it refiberglassed, gel coated, clear coated. Um, then we'll be putting on our guards, keel guard, and my keel guard is huge. It's like it's super wide, so I actually be, will be trimming it down. Because what I'm going to be doing is the keel guard is going to go obviously down the keel okay and I'm gonna try it I think it stops about here so I'll have this much left which kinda sucks however one thing is on this rim here okay this rim actually had damage from where it bumped up against docks bumped into a tree so I had to repair a lot of that so actually I'm gonna be taking part of that keel guard and it's gonna be going down these rims too and hopefully I have enough I got 12 feet and it's so wide, I probably only need like three to four inches, and I think it's eight inches wide. So I'm going to cut, you know, two of the strips off on the ends, and then they're going to come down. And they probably won't do the whole the whole rim. They're just going to do part of the rim. So, but I mean, I wish I could do the whole rim. That would be nice. But I mean, all in all, I mean, it, it doesn't even go all the way down. It does come up to here, but mainly starts about there and then works its way down. So um, go from that. But don't forget, guys, down in the corner should look like two little mud prints. That's the like and subscribe button. Hit that. Subscribe. Stay tuned. Don't forget to comment. And uh, until then, you know, coming up next is how to wet sand.